Hey man, say man, this is the A Man Show back at it again for more content. Back at it again for this series. This time we finna do tight ends. Now tight ends, especially if you rank one of them in the top 10, are the weakest among all the positions. There are not many tight ends that are putting up otherworldly numbers as compared to wideouts like Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, and even Tyreek Hill. But still, we're going to rank them. The top 10 tight ends in the NFL. Let's get it. But first, make sure y'all subscribe. I post NBA and NFL content. Turn on post notifications so that way y'all don't miss a beat. Anyways, stay tuned and let's get on with it. So kicking off my list, I have Cole Komet. Komet is for sure the most underrated tight end in football. The guy has performed at a relative solid level even with playing with a shitty offense. Komet is a guy who can line him up everywhere in the field. You can use him in a screen play. He can use him in a jet sweep. Komet is a versatile tight end who is good in yards after the catch and also a viable player in the red zone. He was the number one receiving option for Justin Fields last season, although he did have a slight decline as far as numbers goes, but going into his age 25 season, we can expect Komet to be a guy who's going to be the first option for the Bears for a while. I think this upcoming season, especially with a improved Bears roster and Justin Fields improving more as a passer, we can see Cole Komet get more recognition. Coming in at the number nine spot, I have Dalton Schultz. Schultz with the Cowboys was a valuable receiving option on offense. He stepped it up as the second receiving option for Dak Prescott and he was very solid. While he wasn't as great as he was the year prior last year, but the guy still has one of the best hands among tight ends. This is a guy who is a consistent ball getter and also he's one of the better blocking tight ends in football. Although he is a viable receiving tight end as far as the passing game goes and also a red zone threat, the reason why he is lower on the list is because the guy is not that great in yards after the catch and he had a career high 6 drop passes. Aside from that, Schultz is definitely going to be a great option for CJ Stroud in my hometown in Houston. Maybe he can be the first receiving option there, who knows, but aside from that, Dalton Schultz at the number 9 spot on my list. At the number 8 spot, I got David Njoku. Njoku has been really under the radar as far as the league goes because he was playing in a mediocre squad in the Browns last year. The guy statistically had arguably the best year of his career. Njoku has been one of the more athletic players at his position, which makes him a serious threat in the open field. He has caught 73% of his passes, which is the highest of his career, and had a career high in touchdowns. As a former first round pick, Njoku did have expectations to be a perennial Pro Bowl tight end due to his athleticism and hands, but the guy throughout his career has been more of a disappointment up until that point last year, all because the guy struggled to stay healthy. But last year, the guy tied his career high of the most games played in the season and has posted career highs in three major stat categories as well as improving as a blocker on the running game. Going into this upcoming season, I can definitely see the Joku be that second receiving option for Deshaun Watson. Coming in at the number 7 spot, I gotta go with Darren Waller. Waller when healthy, keyword, healthy, has been elite as a receiving tight end. The guy is very prolific at gaining yards after the catch. You can line him up at pretty much anywhere in the field, especially as a deep threat, and he can do that at a borderline elite level. He had back-to-back 1,100-yard -back seasons from 2019 to 2020, but the reason why I have him this low is, you guessed it, injuries. The guy only played 11 games in 2021, and last year the guy only played 9 games. He is now with the Giants, and they must need a Waller because like I said, when healthy, Waller is among the top 3 tight ends in the league. Hopefully this guy can stay healthy and be his Raiders self for the Giants because the Giants struggle mightily at the receiving core. The Giants definitely need Darren Waller's services. At the number 6 spot, I gotta go with Pat Fryermuth. Fryermuth is one of the most 
intriguing young titans in the game the guy has broken out and became one of the main options for the Steelers offense he is a high level receiving threat while being a high level blocker the guy had 63 total receptions and 37 of those receptions resulted in a first down and his over 732 total receiving yards is six among tight ends there is a reason why fry Muth is called baby gronk he holds some resemblance of a prime gronk and the guy is literally on the tip of becoming an elite tight end because the only thing that is holding him back from reaching the elite category is because the guy was simply not used enough on offense. He is outside of the top 10 in pass snaps among tight ends. The reason that's the case is because of George Pickens and Deontay Johnson getting all the touches. If Fire Muth was more involved on offense, then you can make the case that Fire Muth could have been a top 5 tight end in the game. And based on recent news, the Steelers is really trying to key into Fire Muth and trying to put him in for more reps on offense. Alright, kicking off on the top 5 in the list of tight ends, I gotta go with Dallas Goddard. Goddard has been one of the most consistent and efficient tight ends in football. The guy has been one of the best ball catchers at his position as he caught nearly 80% of his targets. And both Jalen Hurts and Gardner and Mishu had a 126.6 passer rating when throwing to Goddard's, which is higher than Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. Not only that, he is very, very good in yards after the catch a guy who can extend plays and also the guy is hard to defend especially during traffic the guy has been instrumental for the eagles run to the super bowl last year and in fact Gardner stepped up big in all the postseason games, catching nearly 90% of his targets. The guy's impact for the Eagles shouldn't go unnoticed, and had he gotten injured through November, the guy would have had almost 100 receptions and 1,000 yards, which will rank him among the three best players at his position. But unfortunately, he got injured. His production is still among the borderline elites at his position, and rightfully deserves to be in the top five on my list. Coming in at the number 4 spot, I gotta go with Mark Andrews. Andrews has been among the very best of tight ends in the league for a while. As far as him being an elite blocking tight end and the number 1 receiving option for Lamar Jackson, Andrews has been as great as a playmaker when he has the ball in his hands. The guy had multiple games of recording at least 10 receptions and 100 yards and also in the red zone the guy caught 10 out of 17 targets and scored 5 touchdowns along with it. You can't deny the reliability of Mark Andrews. The guy has been elite for the past 4 seasons including the season in 2021 where he made first team all pro. Even though they have LBJ and Zay Flowers on the team, and because of that, it could affect Mark Andrews' numbers as a whole, but still, I don't think that his production is going to plummet to the point that he's barely a top 10 tight end in the league. Now, at the number 3 spot on my list, I gotta go with TJ Hawkinson. Hawkinson had the best year of his career last season. The man probably has the second best hands at his position right behind Travis Kelsey. Hawkinson is the second receiving option for the Vikings offense and based on last year he was very exceptional. Since he got traded to the Vikings he caught 60 receptions for over 500 yards and 3 TDs while catching over 70% of his targets. Had he gotten traded to the Vikings months earlier he would have gotten over 100 receptions and 1000 receiving yards. Hawkinson had the most contested catches caught by a tight end last year, one of the most elite route runners at his position, and with Adam Thielen gone in free agency, I can see Hawkinson giving Kelsey and Kittle a run for their money. Hawkinson is among the top three on my list. Coming in at the number two spot, of course I have George Kittle. Kittle is one of the most polarizing players in the league, and of course in the tight end position. The best blocking tight end in the game as well as putting up elite receiving numbers for a tight end and by the way made his third all pro selection now over the last two years the guy has not been as dominant as he was in 2018 to 2019 due to the amount of talent on offense but the guy still managed to score over 11 tds which is a career high as well as being extremely dangerous in yards after the catch as his standing plays is his bread and butter. The guy is truly one of the most well-rounded players in the league. The guy can pretty much do everything at an extremely high level, and I just don't see him slowing down anytime soon. As long as he is in a 49ers uniform, the team will always be contention for a Super Bowl. 
But at the number one spot, y'all guessed it, is Travis Kelsey. There hasn't been a tight end who has been so consistently elite for almost a decade than Travis Kelsey. Kelsey has been one of the biggest receiving threats in the NFL, at least top five for the past five seasons. The man had career highs in targets, receptions, and touchdowns and made his 7th All-Pro team and 8th Pro Bowl team and also finished his prolific season with a Super Bowl. I'm going to make an in-depth video one day on why I think Travis Kelsey is the greatest tight end in NFL history. Yes, over Rob Gronkowski. No other tight end has been elite and as consistent as Travis Kelsey for almost a decade and I don't think that a whole lot of people are appreciating what Kelsey has done throughout his career. As of right now, I really don't see him slowing down anytime soon. I can see him be the best tight end in the game in the next few years. And last season already cemented the fact that Travis Kelsey is going to be an undisputed first ballot Hall of Famer when it's all said and done. And I guarantee that a lot more people are going to appreciate the body of work that Travis Kelsey has done throughout his career. When the man hangs up his cleats and helmet. And that's the list. What are your thoughts? Any agreements or disagreements about this list? Y'all let me know in the comment section below and make sure y'all subscribe for more NBA and NFL content. Road to 1000 subs by the end of the year and turn on post notifications and that is all. Stay litty. This is the A-Man Show. Sign out.